When a reporter questioned Martin Frizzle about the allegedly hostile work climate on the Under Fire program, a top IDV executive punished him for making an odd joke about aubergines. The broadcaster's head of strategy, policy, and regulation Magnus Brook said that Mr. Frizzle's remark to the Sky News journalist was ill-judged while testifying before a Department of Culture, Media, and Sports Select Committee today. The question was in response to Mr. Frizzle being questioned on Sunday about whether or not the workplace at this morning was toxic, to which he responded, I'll tell you what's toxic, and I've always found it toxic. Aubergine, are you a fan of aubergine? Do you, since I don't like aubergine, tell me if you do. Just a personal matter, the remarks, which came just before Holly Willoughby's return to the show following a two-week absence due to Philip Schofield's resignation, infuriated a large portion of the IDV crew. They are now allegedly petrified to tell the truth to the investigation. The pressure on Mr. Frizzle, the husband of former GMTV host Fiona Phillips, increased yesterday after MP and former IDV News anchor John Nicholson said he was tasked with safeguarding young staff and that he had been outrageously dismissive and flippant on camera about an immensely serious issue. He continued by saying that he would have preferred not to be a young employee of this morning who brought up bullying with the editor. Let me tell you Mr. Nicholson that we take those problems very seriously, Mr. Brooks said in response. Mr. Nicholson prodded him more, and Mr. Brooks added, I wouldn't endorse what he said, in fact. The politician then said, you agree it's bizarre, to Mr. Brooks. I wouldn't use that word, a stammering Mr. Brooks said. What term would you choose, Mr. Nicholson continued, I'd say it was really ill-advised for him to say what he did, but I can promise you on behalf of IDV that we do take all of these complaints very seriously, because we do have a culture in which people's behavior means a great deal to IDV. Mr. Brooke declined to say whether Mr. Frizzle's position at the channel was secure, but he did note that the business recently launched an external investigation into what happened at this morning, which is currently fighting for its life after almost 35 years on air which is being carried out by J. Mulcahy Casey. If bullying is discovered, the speaker said, we would expect people to report it, and we would expect it to be dealt with appropriately, which it will be. Additionally, Mr. Brooke emphasized that bullying and harassment at work are unacceptable, and that the channel takes its responsibilities in relation to safeguarding and duty of care very seriously. Mr. Nicholson poked fun at Ms. Willoughby, 42, in the opening of his interrogation by asking Mr. Brooke whether he was okay. The disclosure was made while the IDV daytime team was invited to a meeting yesterday in the Loose Women Studios at the network's West London facilities. It's believed that head of daytime Emma Gormley, who served as Mr. Frizzle's assistant while he was editor of the no-defunct GMTV breakfast show, is handling queries from the employees. People are outraged. They want to know what's going on, one spokesperson told the Daily Mail. Can you picture coming to Martin's office right now to voice your concerns? A 64-year-old man named Mr. Frizzle was the focus of an inquiry in 2019 after a female co-worker lodged a complaint against him. There was no support for her assertions in the investigation, which was carried out by another senior member of the ITV team. When Ms. Willoughby returned to this morning, Mr. Nicholson made light of her on-air declaration by posing the question, are you okay, to Mr. Brooke. He was making reference to Ms. Willoughby's remarks from yesterday, when she opened her first program after Mr. Schofield left by addressing the audience and asking, first of all, are you okay? The MP also called Mr. Frizzle's response to queries on bullying, in which he mentioned aubergines, surreal and bizarre. Mr. Brooke called the remarks ill-judged and would not say if the editor's position was secure. The head of the culture, media, and sport committee, Caroline Dineenage, stated earlier in the meeting that today's topic will be the draft media bill, not this morning. She stated that they will postpone talking about the Schofield quitting the program until Dame Carol in McCall the CEO of ITV, appears before MPs on June 14. However, Mr. Nicholson was eager to concentrate on Schofield and informed Mr. 
broke that the IDV executive will be appearing before the committee shortly to discuss the current hot topic in the press, but I believe it would be quite strange if we had a very senior IDV representative like yourself without asking a few questions regarding the this morning incident. I think I should start by asking whether you're okay. Mr. Brooke was shocked by the inquiry and said, Am I okay? Yes, thank you. I'm doing great. Then, Mr. Nicholson said, Good, because I know that's the this morning question of the day. At the weekend, I spoke with IDV insiders, including those who currently work for and have previously worked for this morning. It appears to be a really depressing location. Are you happy with the level of care that the editorial staff and senior management give to employees, especially young ones, at IDV in general and to those working there specifically? ITV has a very major set of policies and a very complex and important system of duty of care and protection, Mr. Brooke said. We have a code of conduct that outlines what we expect from people in terms of behavior, and it covers a wide range of topics, including equal opportunity, respect for labor, decency, and understanding. Then, we have a crucial set of guidelines that internally keep individuals accountable. But Mr. Nicholson afterwards questioned him on why so many of his past and present employees appeared to be dissatisfied. However, Mr. Brooks said that he was unable to answer that question at this time and mentioned that ITV had hired renowned London attorney Jane Mulcahy Casey to look into the circumstances. Yes, I know, you previously had an inquiry, of course, and we'll discuss this in more depth on the 14th of June, but numerous allegations ITV made about that prior inquiry don't appear to fully stand up on closer scrutiny, Mr. Nicholson said. What do you think about the charges of bullying that have been made over the last week? What do I make of them? Mr. Brooke retorted. Yeah, what do you make of them as a senior IDV official? What do you feel when you hear workers complain about bullying? Because that's got to be the worst thing you can hear, as a senior management, right? Mr. Nicholson said. Look, we take our responsibilities in relation to safeguarding and duty of care very seriously. Mr. Brooke continued, Bullying is very clearly defined as a violation of our code of conduct. We have a set of rules on workplace harassment and bullying. Bullying is obviously wrong. We would anticipate that individuals would report bullying that violates our policy, and that it would be dealt with correctly if it were discovered. And so it shall be. After that, Mr. Nicholson attacked this morning editor Martin Frizzle for his response to inquiries into claims of a toxic work atmosphere at IDV. Sky News contacted Mr. Frizzle in advance of Willoughby's return to the program. When asked if the workplace at this morning was toxic, he responded, I'll tell you what's poisonous, and I've always thought it toxic. Aubergine, are you a fan of Aubergine? Do you, since I don't like Aubergine, tell me if you do. Just a personal matter. And now, Mr. Nicholson stated, of course, the editor of the show would have been the first person they would have reported to. We all witnessed the show's editor's bizarre behavior yesterday when he began talking about aubergines when he was asked about bullying on the program by a Sky reporter. It was odd and unreal. I believe the majority of viewers would have assumed that this individual was in charge of protecting the staff's younger members. He is speaking about a very serious matter in an incredibly casual and dismissive manner on camera. Given that that editor addresses the subject matter that manner on camera in public, I wouldn't have wanted to be a young staff member approaching him about bullying. Let me tell you, Mr. Nicholson, that we take these matters extremely seriously, Mr. Brooke said. But what about what he stated, Mr.? Nicholson questioned him. I wouldn't endorse what he said, Mr. Brooke said. You agree it's weird, Mr. Nicholson questioned. Furthermore, Mr. Brooke said, I wouldn't use that word. Mr. Nicholson pressed him further and said, What term would you use? I would absolutely think it was incredibly old judge to say what he said, Mr. Brooke retorted. However, I can tell you on behalf of IDV that we do take all of these complaints extremely seriously, especially due to the fact that we do have a culture in which people's behavior counts a great deal. Mr. Brooke said, that's not a question for me and it's not a question for now, in response to Mr. 
Nicholson's inquiry about if Mr. Frizzle's employment was secure after that. By selecting a very senior KC with extensive expertise handling hate shore and particularly sensitive investigations, we've shown that we're taking this seriously, according to the statement, since there are several considerations about privacy and other issues here, it is appropriate that the KC examines the facts and investigates the situation, which is exactly what we are doing. Mr. Nicholson had previously criticized Mr. Frizzle's response. This is a profoundly inappropriate and rude way to reply to inquiries about protecting vulnerable people and bullying in the workplace at IDV, he tweeted yesterday in response to the Sky News broadcast. Eamon Holmes, a former host of This Morning, and DR, Ranj Singh, a former resident physician, have both accused the production staff of having a toxic atmosphere. When DR, Ranj said he complained about bullying and discrimination when working there two years ago and felt like he was managed out as a result. Holmes claimed there was a total cover-up over the Schofield issue. ITV CEO Dame Carolyn McCall stated in a letter to Parliament on Wednesday that an external investigation performed in response to a complaint by DR. Ranj found no evidence of bullying or discrimination. While working on the program from September to December 2019, Emily Maddock, the former director of news for This Morning, said she left because of bullying, sexism, and a toxic culture of fear and intimidation. In response to allegations of toxicity, Mr. Frizzle advised a Sky News reporter on Saturday to read between the lines and said, I think there are some scores being settled. On June 2014, Dame Carol Inn will appear before a parliamentary committee to respond to inquiries on the broadcaster's safeguarding and complaint handling policies in the wake of Schofield's departure. She has acknowledged that she has asked Blackston Chambers Jane Mulcahy Casey to conduct an independent investigation of the facts. Mitchell Simmons, Vice President of Public Policy and Government Affairs at Paramount, and Khalid Hayat, Director of Strategy and Consumer Intelligence at Channel 4, were also present at today's committee meeting. Following her tearful exit from this morning, Willoughby said she was shaken, troubled, let down, and worried about what transpired to cause Schofield to leave the IDV show. Following the shocking resignation of her former co-host Schofield and his subsequent admission of an affair with a younger IDV male colleague, Willoughby made her first appearance on television yesterday. Josie Gibson, her interim co-host, was seated next to Willoughby, who thanked her for coming. Take a big breath now, she went on. First of all, are you okay? So, I hope, sitting here without Phil felt quite odd, and I assume that you could have been experiencing similar emotions to mine, including being shocked, upset, let down, concerned for the welfare of persons involved on both sides, and full of questions. In interviews last week, Schofield claimed to The Sun and the BBC that Willoughby had apologized for lying to Hare and that he was unaware of the unwise, but not criminal affair. Willoughby added, sporting a sleeveless white dress with buttons, you, me and all of us at this morning gave our love and support to someone who was not telling the truth, who acted in such a way that they themselves felt that they had to re-sign from my DV and step down from a career that they loved. There's a lot there to take in, it's also difficult to discern the impact on their own mental health. In my opinion, the desire to heal for everyone's health and well-being is what connects us all today. Schofield has discussed the impact the scandal's consequences has had on his mental health. Schofield told The Sun that the fallout has had a catastrophic effect on his mind and that he is presently making it hour by hour. I hope that as we start this new chapter, and get back to a place of love and enchantment that this show offers for all of us. We may find strength in each other, Willoughby said in a statement she authored herself. Please allow me to express my heartfelt gratitude for all of your nice words and for your presence this morning. To bring you that, the program that we adore, myself, Josie, Dermot O'Leary, Alison Hammond, Craig Doyle, and every single person who works on it will keep working hard each and every day. Tuesday marked the first time since Schofield's acrimonious exit from this morning that Willoughby had posted on social media. Since May 2018, the TV host has not published a permanent message on her personal Instagram account.
She tweeted a picture of herself on Tuesday wearing the outfit she'll be wearing for the live show that she and Josie Gibson will host. Willoughby can be seen grinning for the camera while wearing a flowery ghost dress and high-heeled nude shoes. Morning Tuesday. See you on at the rate this a morning at 10 when with at the rate J-O-S-I-E-G-I-B-S-O-N-85. The wonderful at the rate Sarah, she wrote as the description for the photo, Beanie is here with us today to discuss her tremendously significant and intimate documentary.